morning, Calvary. Yes, welcome back to another Sunday here at Calvary Christian Center. We are so glad that you are joining us this morning. In case you do not know who I am, my name is Pastor Mary, my husband and I. We are the online campus pastors here at Calvary, and I have a very, very, very special guest with me. You may have seen him before on pre-show, but this is Pastor Lewis. Yes, I yes. am the guest services pastor here. So all that pretty much it means is that we're responsible for your experience when you come live and in person. So I like to say that we like to treat our people well from the street to the seat. So Yes, I love that. They have everything from welcome team and so much more that you guys do here on campus. And it is a very vital part of being here at Calvary, you know, like you said, from street to seat, we want people to feel welcome as soon as they enter into the parking lot. And that's exactly what your team does every yeah. single week. Oh yeah, cause you know, Mary, there's some times where we have bad weeks, yeah. right? We have bad days mm -hmm. and people come to church and they're seeking for that hope, yes. they're seeking for that love. Yes. And I think one of the most, I've heard plenty of testimonies, how people pull into the parking lot mm -hmm. with them having a bad day. And do you know that a smile is just contagious? Yes, it and is. And when they see our people <laughs> smiling and loving on people, mm -hmm. especially first time guests, yes. it's just contagious. It kind of just changes the atmosphere and changes that day. And that's what we want. We want to share the love of God with people. Yes. Rain or shine, you guys are out there loving on people. I love it. All right. So if you guys are just now tuning in, go ahead and leave a comment in the chat below. We want to connect with you. We have our on online team readily available to say hello, good morning, um, and also comment where you guys are from. We'd love to know where you're tuning in from. I know we have people from all across the country, even people from Africa tuning in. Um, and so go ahead and uh, yeah. type down in the chat below where you're tuning in from. We would love to hear from you. I'm almost curious to see who's the furthest right now. Where, yeah. Type in where you're, where, where you're watching from. I want to know where the furthest state, where the furthest yes. country is coming from. Yes, we'd love to know where you're tuning in from and how far you are away from us. So that would be great because we're here, obviously, in Florida, Ormond Beach. Um, but we'd love to know where you're tuning in from. And also, if you have a prayer request, you can drop it in the chat at any single time during the service, yep. even right now. So Yeah, we have a team that's ready, and we're really going to just pray and come in unity yes. with you at whatever you're praying for. Yes, yes, yes. We love it. So, Pastor Lewis, why don't you tell us about discipleship classes? Yes, discipleship classes. So, this our discipleship classes are every Wednesday at 630. And we have about six different classes that you can choose from, all the way from... I, I'm just a believer. I'm just getting into this thing. There's stuff that's called uh, foundations and simple start. Mm -hmm. And they're just one that wants to know more about Christ and salvation and, and more on the theological sense. We have um, classes that range from, from small to big. Um, but you're more than welcome to join a discipleship class. It, yes. Even though we started, it's not too late. You can go to Calvary FL forward slash discipleship yes. and in, and that's where you can sign up and yes we're going into our third week of it Mary yes. and it's been awesome yes, the people have been asking been. interesting questions and and that's what it's meant for mm -hmm. it's for us leaders to create an opportunity for if you have questions you can come and ask us questions and we can talk about it it's all about building mm -hmm. each other up just as um the discipleships build the disciples in the early church Yes, exactly. It is not too late to join. We will leave a link in the chat below. So make sure you click on that link. If you are in person, we would love to have you come all the way over here to Ormond Beach. And also if you attend to another campus, we also have those readily available on our other campuses as well in New Smyrna and in Palm Coast. So you do not want to miss out on that. It's so important to be discipled. I just want to say shout out to Anna. We see yes. you. This De Castro. Praise God. Yes, we're so glad that you're on there this morning. Also, this is a very special Sunday, Lewis. Can you tell us why it's a very special Sunday? What do we have today? Today is Growth Track Graduation. Yeah. Growth Track Graduation is this Sunday. In a few moments, we're going to be tuning into that. Um, but before we go into that, I just want to elaborate a little bit more, and you can also as well. Yep. Growth Track is a great way to get plugged into Calvary. Yes. It's a great way to learn a little bit more not only about the church, but a little bit more about yourself and how you can pour back into the church. Is there anything else you want to add to that? Oh, it's yeah. Amazing. I just may believe that we're all made with purpose, right? And that we're all yes. meant to, call, you know, per, to live in our, our purpose here on mm -hmm. this earth. And one way of doing that is serving, serving the Lord, yes. serving the house. And then 
Growth Track is an awesome way to even recognize what your purposes are, mm -hmm. what your gifts are. You even take a test on that to even yes. recognize, hey, what am I talented in? You know, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people I remember coming through Growth Track mm -hmm. and not knowing where do I fit in, you know, in a church. And that helped me identify mm -hmm. what areas I could. And I started Growth Track in 2017. And since then, mm -hmm. look at me now, like yeah. what the Lord can do. And I know that there's purpose out for you out there. And that's the first step is growth track yes. to get in there. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Like we said, um, growth track is graduation is this Sunday, but there will also be a link down below for you guys to click on to register for next month's class. It yep. starts the first Sunday in, we are in the month of May coming up. Yep. So go ahead and get registered for growth track. You can also do it online, which yep. is amazing. So just in case, you know, you might have to work on a Sunday and you may not be able to get here for one of those weeks. You are also able to do it online, or maybe you are just strictly online. You can also take online growth track and it is um, Thursday nights at 7 p.m. and we would love to have you guys yeah. and if and it's a three-week course so that's all it is it's 9 a.m. before service so you're not missing service you'll come just a little yes. early um, it's 30 minutes and then you'll be able to attend service right mm -hmm. afterwards yep it's awesome all right well that is all that we have for you guys this morning get ready because growth track graduation is about to start in just a few minutes yep take care yourself wave at me all right that looks good and if you haven't gone through it you need to find your place here 
So I want you just to turn your attention to the stage today and let's just honor these that are graduating and see them blessed as they are launched into serving in the house. Amen. It's good to see you. This is a good group. Pastor Cindy. Amen. Well, it's good to see you and just, I know your journey over the last three weeks, uh, you've been learning all about Calvary and what the church is about and a little bit about yourself, I hope, and how you can be plugged in and the gifts and the talents and the abilities that God has put inside of you that they're not to sit dormant on a seat, but they are to be used in his kingdom. We need each and every one of you. We need each and every one in this place today to take an active part. God is building his church and we need your help, amen? So today you're standing here with this t-shirt on that actually declares our mission statement. Pursue revival, build unity, release purpose, and leave legacy. And that's what Calvary's about. We're here to pursue revival. We want to see revival come not only in the Daytona Beach area, but around the world. We want to be a church that builds unity. In a day that there is so much division, we want the world to see that there is unity in this house. And there is love and unity through Jesus Christ. Release purpose. That's what Growth Track is all about right now in your life. That you are being released into the very purpose that God has for you. And to leave legacy. That's so important for us here at Calvary. We want the next generation to know who Jesus is and know his power within them. So I'm going to read um, some of the covenant statements that I know you have gone over, but I want to read them. And as I read them, I want you to respond by saying, I will. Amen. I will protect the unity of my church by acting in love towards its members, refusing to gossip, being an answer, and submitting and following leadership. If you will do that, say, I will. I will share the responsibility of my church by praying for its growth and health, inviting the unchurched to attend, and warmly welcoming those who visit. I will serve the ministry of my church by discovering my gifts and talents, using my God-given gifts to make a difference in the lives of others and constantly developing a servant's heart. If you'll do that, say, I will. I will support the testimony of my church by attending church and small groups faithfully, living a godly life, and giving generously and regularly. If you'll do that, say, I will. So this shirt that you're wearing, it's more than a shirt. It is a mantle of ministry. It's a symbol that you as an ambassador of Christ carry what this house represents in God's kingdom. So to wear this church is to embrace its principles, its culture, and the ideals of God's kingdom here at Calvary. So the Bible is clear that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. And at Calvary, on every campus, we believe the same. I don't believe that any of you are here by accident or that you're standing on this stage on this day by accident. But you are here on purpose, God's purpose, to fulfill His plan for your life. Isn't that wonderful to know? That we were born with a purpose. God knows where we are, and He has designed this day just for you. So we believe that you've taken your first step in fulfilling God's purpose in your life by going through growth track. And so as a symbol that you are ready to go to another level in God and here at Calvary, on the count of three, I'm going to ask that you take one step forward in front of this church, in front of the leaders, and most of all, before God as a sign that you're going to continue to move forward with the utmost diligence and commitment. Are you ready? All ready. So I'm on the count of three, we're going to take a big step forward. Are you ready? One, two, three. Will you stretch your hands towards these Calvary 
As we pray over them and just bless them as they launch into serving here in this ministry, Father God, we just thank you for a fresh anointing. Release it now, Lord. Every gift, every, every talent, every ability, every calling. Father, I call it forth into this place that you would use them mightily. Use them to touch hearts. Use them to change lives. Use them, Lord, to show love, to encourage one another. Show them, Lord God. Use them according to your plan and your purpose for their life. We we pray over them this morning, Lord, and thank you for the anointing that rests upon them now. In the name of Jesus, every plan, every purpose of God fulfilled in them and through them in this place. In Jesus' name, and let the church shout amen. Hallelujah. Let's give them a hand, Calvary. Amen. You can go this way. We love you. So excited to see you find your place. Make a difference. Hallelujah. Well, why don't you stand up, Calvary, all over this place today. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Hey, there's a lot of exciting things happening right now at this moment. Pastor John and Pastor Courtney and, our, and some of their team are actually in Singapore. Can you believe that? They are literally 12 hours different on the other side of the world. It is 10 o'clock at night where they are. They've been in church all day. They've actually been doing worship services, nightly worship services over this past week in Singapore. And lives have just been changed. God has been using them in such an incredible way. Can we give God praise for that? Amen. So they have just completed an incredible day of ministry and now they're getting ready to fly to Malaysia. So they are in Singapore, they are in Malaysia, they are singing glory hallelujah and all the other songs that have been birthed out of this house. Let me tell you what, Calvary is changing the world and impacting the world for the glory of God. Amen. Apostle right now is in Orlando at our Kingdom Culture campus this morning. So he is ministering there today. Three services, 8.30, 10.30, 12.30. Can I tell you that ever since Easter, Kingdom Culture has been busting at the seams. They have been having people literally standing outside where they have televisions in their courtyard area, standing along the walls to hear the gospel. God is up to something right now, church, and we are in the middle of it. Hallelujah! It's time for revival. There's hope in Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Where are the people of God this morning? Hallelujah. He said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I don't care what's been going on in your life this morning. You have a joy that the world can't take away. He didn't just overcome for himself. He overcame for you and he overcame for me. Whatever you're going through today, there's blood for that. There's word for that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we have a special guest this morning that is going to lead us in worship. B.J. Putnam, he is a friend of the house. He leads worship at Bethel Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana every week. But he has come all the way to Florida to be with us. So can we give him a welcome today? Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Are you ready to lift up the name of Jesus in this place? Here we go.
There's freedom in His presence. 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 There's freedom in His presence.
say, I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say, I will say this is in this place today. Are you ready?
won't be quiet. Our God is alive. How could I keep it inside? No, I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? No, I won't be quiet. My God saved my life. I Oh, I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? So I will pray. One on the throne, covered in clouds, the lamb that was slain, wears many crowns, humble and true, righteous and strong, Lord of all lords.
bow to your name.
I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord and he heard.
I ever go through changes, how worthy you are of my praise. In the valley I will praise you. On the mountaintop I will praise you. Nothing ever changes how worthy you are of praise. You're always worthy. You're always worthy. You're always worthy. You're always worthy. You're always worthy.
He said he's a very present help. He's not too early and he's never too late, but he's always present and accounted for. Hallelujah. Somebody give your way. Woo, somebody give your way a praise in this house today. King of kings and Lord of lords. He is still reigning on the throne. He is still a very present help in your time of trouble. I don't know what you need today. I don't know what you came in with. But I have a feeling that Jehovah Nicotine has just stepped into this place to meet you right where you are at your point of need. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. If he's ever came through for you just in the nick of time. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And maybe you need a miracle this morning. Maybe you need a touch from the Lord today. Maybe there's something that you cannot move and you need God to move it. Maybe there's something you need to change and you can't change it. You need God to change it. I declare that Jehovah Nicotine has just stepped into this place to minister to you this morning. Lift your hands all over this house if you trust in him. And let's go to the Lord in prayer in this atmosphere. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I feel miracles in this place this morning. I feel a release of the presence and power of God over this house. And Lord, we lift your name and we magnify you. We glorify you. We exalt your name together in this place because we trust you. There's not been a time in our life that you have ever left us or ever forsaken us. But you are always right on time. And Lord, this morning I release working power in this place I release healing and breakthrough I pray for deliverance I declare peace over troubled minds a soothing healing balm over broken hearts this morning I declare the power of God that causes us to always triumph through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I release victory in the mighty name of Jesus and I give your name all glory and all the praise in Jesus mighty name we trust in Jesus mighty name we praise in Jesus mighty name we worship in Jesus mighty name we speak and we declare and we adjourn that you are alive and well in this place today we give you glory today Lord in Jesus name we pray and let the church shout amen Putnam and this team a hand for taking us in the presence of God. Thank you so much. Amen. Why don't you turn to your neighbor, give him a big hug. Let them know you're glad to see him in the house of the Lord. There's no place like the house of the Lord. No place like the house of the Lord. You can come in feeling low and you walk out with joy. You can walk in troubled, but you walk out in peace. There's nothing like the house of the Lord. We are blessed to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, for those of you who might be here today, and it's your very first time coming to Calvary, I am Pastor Dawn. My husband and I have been at Calvary as pastors for 26 years. We've been talking about that a lot this week. Can you believe that? My gracious, almost 27 years that we have been here in this community and seen God do so many things. But if it's your very first time being here, would you wave at me so I can see you? Anybody across the room? All right, let's give them a hand, Calvary. I see you back there. Hey, let's give the ones in the back a hand. Come on. We're so glad that you're here today. I know you're not here by accident. God's got something special for you. I'd love it if you would type the word guest to the number that's on the screen behind me, or there's cards in front of you, I believe, that you could fill out if you'd rather do it that way. 
And also right after this service, I would love the opportunity to meet you if you're my first time guest. Um, in the lobby to the left, you'll see a big guest central sign and I will be there. So I'd love to hear how the Lord brought you today. But also there are people tuning in for the very first time at Calvary FL online. Can we give them a hand today? There's people watching from all around the world. I bet there might even be some Singapore watchers this morning. Pastor John and Courtney, if you missed my announcement earlier, Pastor John Wilds, uh, our daughter Courtney and much of their team are in Singapore. And they are actually, it's like a quarter till 11 at night there right now. And so they have finished their Sunday, but they have been doing worship services all week long in Singapore. And thousands and thousands of people have been encountering the presence of God. And God has been using them in a mighty way. Can we give God praise for that opportunity? Tuesday, I believe they will fly out to Malaysia. And so they will be in Malaysia doing again worship services, teaching on worship, raising up worship leaders. Isn't it incredible that God is using Calvary to impact the world for Jesus? Apostle is in, uh, my husband is actually in Orlando at our Kingdom Culture. I mentioned this morning, they are busting out at the seams. They're in three services, but literally they have people standing outside in their breezeway, watching it through a television screen, standing up against the wall. They don't even have a seat to sit in, but there is a hunger and there is a drawing by the Spirit of God in Orlando. Can we give God praise for that? And so he is there preaching all three services today. But I am so glad that you are here. I believe that God's got a word for you in this house. I want to also just make mention of this for all the women in the house. Come on, I want to hear from the women. May 3rd and 4th, I am hosting the Glow Encounter. I normally call it a Glow Conference, but this year I really felt prompted by the Lord to call it a Glow Encounter because I believe that women are going to encounter the glory of the Lord and be transformed. I truly believe that. You know that word in the Bible where it says, we behold His glory and we are transformed into His likeness and we go from glory to glory. That word transformed is actually metamorpho and I have been declaring women over your life that during this weekend you are going to experience a spiritual metamorphosis come on just like the butterfly breaks forth and is free to soar I declare and decree that there are some women that are going to come maybe you felt stuck maybe you haven't felt the, like you can walk out and be authentically who God has created for you to be but after this weekend I declare that you are going to soar hallelujah in Jesus name into everything that he has for you so you can go online to calvaryfl.com slash glow it's only two weeks away and register it's free it's going to be amazing. We're going to encounter the Lord. So I want you to be a part of that. Now, Pastor Anderson's got some more announcements for you today. Can we give Pastor Anderson a hand? We love you. Well, good morning, Calvary. How's everybody doing this morning? Look at your neighbor. If you came with them, look at them and say, you look good this morning. Look at them, tell them, I knew in the car this was going to be one of your, we need to take a picture today. Look at them and say, I knew in the car that we were going to need to take a picture together today. You look great this morning, Calvary. It's so good to see each and every single one of you. We're glad that you're here. Uh, really, really quickly, we want to talk to you about your next step. This morning, we had 18 Growth Track graduates. Can you make some noise? For those 18 people who said, I'm going to start walking in my purpose and serving the house of God. So look, if you look around and you say, I'm ready to go to the next level, I'm ready to start serving in the house of the Lord, then growth track is your next step that happens every sunday morning you can register online or in the foyer calvaryfl.com slash growth track make sure that you sign up for growth track make sure that you go online get the info register so that you can take your next step one more time though can we give it up for those 18 growth track graduates amen amen also, how many of you have been coming out to our Calvary U Discipleship Nights on Wednesday? Let me see you do a big wave at me. It's been incredible. If you haven't been here, here's the secret. You're missing out. 
look at somebody and say, you're missing out if you haven't been here. You, if you haven't been here, you're missing out. You need to be here. Get discipled. No matter where you are in your walk with God, there is a class, a group. There is a place for you. It's not just about coming and learning. We're building deep connections and relationships with people. So wherever you're at in that journey of faith, Calvary U Discipleships for you, that happens Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. right here in our foyer. We dismiss from there to go to classes. Make sure that you're here this Wednesday night. Finally, uh, baptisms. How many of you love when we have baptisms? We see some powerful moments. Baptisms are coming up. Our next baptism is Sunday, April 28th. So if you need to take that next step of faith, baptism is a big deal in our faith. You can register at calvaryfl.com slash baptisms or in the foyer. Make sure that if you need to be baptized, that you register on April 28th. You're here on that Sunday to get baptized. Amen. Was anybody blessed this morning? Pastor Demetrius is going to come. Well, good morning, Calvary. Are you truly blessed this morning in the room? Listen, as we're getting ready for to give our tithe and to give our offering, I want you to do me a favor real quick. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is good. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, you look good. But God is good. Why don't you give a good God a great praise? Listen, I want you to know this morning that God is not good because of what he does. God is good because of who he is. God is good before he blesses you. God is good before he heals you. God was good before he even saved you. God is good. Look at somebody around you and say, God is good. Listen, God is good, and that never changes. When I read the Old Testament, David says it like this. David says, I was young, and out, and now I'm old. He says, i never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. When I read the Gospels, Jesus says, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what you're going to eat or drink. The clothes that you're going to put on for the Father knows you have need of these things before you even ask and then I read the epistles and Paul says this he says my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory what I'm trying to tell you this morning is this is that God is a loving father that always takes care of his children won't you look at somebody beside you and say God always takes care of me God always takes care of his children. You will always have what you need when you need it. And I declare that over your life today. I declare that you're going to have the money that you need. I declare that you're going to have the finances you need. You're going to have the wisdom you need. I declare this morning that you're going to have the breakthrough that you need. Because God always takes care of his children. So what I'm trying to tell you this morning is that when you give your tithe and when you give an offering, you are not trying to buy God off. You're not trying to pay God to bless you. You're not trying to give an offering to try to convince God to take care of you. He already does that. And God so takes care of us that he provides for our houses. And he doesn't just provide just enough, but I'm convinced in my mind that he's a God of more than enough. Can anybody use some more than enough in your life? One of the things that God does is when he blesses you and he takes care of your house, he blesses you with more than enough so that you can partner with him and help take care of his house. So as you're, as you're giving your tithe and giving your offering this morning, I want you to give with the confidence that I can trust God to take care of my need. I want your confidence to rest in the fact that when I'm giving this morning, I'm giving because I'm free to give. I'm not given to manipulate God. I'm not given to try to twist God's arm to get God to do anything. I'm giving because he's good. Look at somebody beside you and say, I'm giving this morning because I serve a God who is good. Now, one more time, before you give your tithe and your offering, why don't you give a good God a great praise? Come on, give a good God a great praise. Why don't you take a moment and think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you and how he's blessed you and let that be the reason that you give this morning. Look at somebody one more time and say, God is good.
All right, hold up your tithe and offering. There are many ways by which you can give. As the ushers are coming forth, I want you to get ready to give. There are many ways you can give, and they are on the screen right here behind me. You can give online. You can text to give. There's an envelope you, for you to give, and there's an app in which you can give. And those of you who are watching online, we want you to give today because God is good. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this offering. Thank you for your goodness. I pray increase. I pray prosperity. I pray overflow. I pray financial breakthrough. Father, I pray jobs. I pray in opportunities over every person's life in this room because you're a good God in Jesus' name. Shout amen. You may give your own. to just take this moment uh, before we get into the word um, we have in this church some very special people and the Morrison family has been here since we came when we came to Calvary and kind of interviewed and you know trying to hear the Lord and whether we were supposed to come or not the Morrisons were in the in the lead committee that was determining that and so they have just been with us and stood with us tom morrison has served on our elder board this entire time we've been here and just been such a strong support his wife darlene 
just just a love she has served this house faithfully served our school in every way her heart beat for what God's heart beats for and that is his church his people and this Friday she crossed over into her eternal reward she as we have been worshiping and praising the Lord this morning she has been in heaven dancing around the throne saying holy 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 she has an atmosphere like we have not yet experienced yet to worship in but Tom and the girls and all of your family that are here today we just want you to know that we love you and we are praying for you and we are standing with you. We know that Darlene is in a better place. She's healed and whole. It's hardest for those of us who are left here. But can you just let the Morrison family know that we are praying for them. We're behind you, lifting you up. We just want you to feel the strength of family today in this room. We love you so much. Amen. So we're going to jump into the word this morning. We have been in a series um, called the Built Series. And actually, Apostle and I were going to teach this last Sunday, but the Holy Ghost had his way. And if the Holy Ghost steps in and wants to do something, how many of you know we're going to step out of the way and let him do it? Amen. So I'm just declaring those that were prayed for last week, you're walking in healing. And there was so much that God did. But so I am here. I was going to preach this with him. But now I'm going solo. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but we're in this built series, and today we are on home improvement. So I'm going to open with Genesis 27, verse 26 through 29. If you have it, say amen, or you can follow on the screen. The Bible says this. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him and said, Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be those who bless you. Today we're talking about home improvement. Will you slip your hands up this morning and let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. Your word is alive and it is powerful. It is, it is, it is constant and it is true. It is never changing. And today, Lord, I thank you for a fresh anointing upon my life as I preach and upon your people as they hear. Father, I pray that you would speak a word into every home, into, into every family, into every husband, every wife, Lord, that our homes, Father, would be built upon a foundation that cannot be shaken in these times. We bless you and we praise you and we thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you just turn to your neighbor and just say, let's, let's have some home improvement today. Amen. Who, who would admit that you've got some room for improvement? Woo, I know I do. Come on, somebody. One of the most important places to constantly improve is in the home and that is my prayer today. We, at Calvary, we want strong homes. We want strong families, strong marriages. In fact, every Wednesday night, there is a marriage class at Calvary U. So if you would like to get plugged in, even to build your marriage in a strong way, you can come out at 6.30 on Wednesday nights and be a part of that. But one of the most important places to constantly improve is in the home. Uh, to maintain and care for a house, it, it takes a lot. And y'all can just pray for my husband. I know if he was here, he would be saying amen because I am like the most at wanting to update things around the house. Come on. Any women feel me in this place? Y'all just pray for my husband because I'm always about remodeling something, either around here or at home. But we want to take some time today and just just teach a little bit from the direction of the word and then also just from 
35 years of being married and raising three kids. But this text that we just read here, it's kind of an unusual text to read for a message like this. But this is a great and amazing blessing that we just referenced from the Word of God. And there are several things here that can be applied to anyone who genuinely desires home improvement. Now, this story, if you know this story of Isaac and Jacob and Esau, it, it seems kind of odd that we would choose this text because if you know anything about this story, they have quite the flawed family going on here between Isaac and Rebecca and Jacob and Esau. But I'm telling you what it shows me. It shows me that even flawed and imperfect families can produce generational legacy. Come on. You ought to just praise the Lord right now <laughs> over that. That where we are weak, he will be strong. That where we mess up, he, he's more than enough, even in our families. So today I want to pull out three things that we see in this text that can actually build and strengthen families today. Number one, the touch. The touch in the home matters. In Genesis 27, 26, he it says, Then his father Isaac said to him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. Now, now the word kiss here in the text from the Hebrew is a, is a very broad word. It, it can mean kiss, but it also implies as well to touch gently, to touch lovingly. And we want to talk about touch within the family and how important that is. And, you know, I know that there is so much in our society today, so much of uh, sexual abuse and incest and things like that that we hear about all the time in the earth. But hear me, don't let the wrong type of touching that seems to be prevalent keep you from the right kind of touching in your house. That touch that is genuine. Come on, that touch that is pure. That touch that is totally appropriate. There is something powerful about the touch. You can say a whole lot about the right touch, with the right touch. The right touch affirms. Have you ever been touched in such a way that it just, it just gave you strength? It just affirmed you. The right touch can bring a sense of security. How about from, from a father, when a father reaches out and touches you? I know as a, as a daughter and as my daughters, when my husband comes alongside of them and reaches out and touches them, there is something about his touch that releases security in their life. The touch, it, it brings security. It empathizes. It, it comforts us. Uh, the right touch assures us when we're, when we're questioning. The right touch shows respect. The right touch calms. It chases away anxiety. And in the home, there definitely needs to be right touches, especially towards children. Now, moms, you know this. You know that if your child wakes up in the middle of the night and they have had a terrifying dream, that it's your gentle touch on them that causes them just to settle right down. Dad, you know when that child has been hurt or he has fallen and you hear your name screamed out, you know that when you go in and you place that gentle touch on that child, it calms them right now. It reduces the stress that is literally trying to take them out in that moment. It's the right touch. And right touches constantly given can also help our children know when wrong touches occur. Can I get a witness? You know, when we were growing up and, and raising our kids, we were always very careful. And I know moms and dads in this room, you're, you're like this, but we actually had a saying and our, our children knew it. We reiterated it all the time. Nobody touches you where your bathing suit covers. Hey, if you're not telling your children that, you need to let them know. But I was reading even this week about the right touch. And this, this right touch can actually cause the heart rate to go down. Can you believe that? The right touch can lower blood pressure. A touch promotes good health. 
And overall, it said, it's just plain good for you. Woo! Actually, it was also talking about a hug. It wasn't just talking about just a touch, but it actually was referring to hugging. That hugging is just plain good for you. And one thing about Jesus, he touched people. He, he, was a, he was a Jesus who touched people, and he let people touch him. Jesus placed his hands on people. And one of the many things that I love about Jesus is this. Jesus was not untouchable. Woo. Can you imagine the ultimate holy man, the epitome of purity and goodness, the king of glory and the rock of ages was touchable. He held babies. He let prostitutes wash his feet. He went and he touched the fevered brows of those who were sick and who were affirmed in all kinds of diseases. He touched people and he allowed people to touch him. And one of the greatest stories about the touch of Jesus is found in Matthew 8, 2 through 3. The Bible says, and behold, a leper came and worshiped him saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately his leper, his leprosy was cleansed. Listen, Jesus didn't need to touch that man. The man needed Jesus to touch him. And this was a radical thing for Jesus to do in that day because if you touch someone with leprosy, according to Jewish law, you were deemed unclean and then you could not be around anyone else. But even though this man was unworthy and he was unclean and he was cast out and he was contagious, even though he was a social and religious reject because of his condition, Jesus touched the man because Jesus understood the power of a touch. You know, I, I look deeper in this situation that was going on here. And I don't know if you know a whole lot about leprosy, but something that I learned about leprosy is this. There's many different forms of leprosy, but the most common form, and probably what was going on in that day, was the way that leprosy affected the body. It did damage to the body's nervous system. In other words, it, it made you lose your feeling. Some people, they even lost complete feeling in their whole body. Their whole body was numb. And so that's why it was very dangerous for them. They could be cutting, cutting food and cut their finger off and not even know it. Or they could get near a fire and not even realize that they had been caught on fire because of the way leprosy affects the nervous system. It would cause your whole body to go numb. And here this man is as Jesus comes up to him. And Jesus must have known this man cannot just feel as I touch him because of the way the leprosy is. You see, if, you, if you're blind, you can't see. If you're deaf, you can't hear. If you're a leper, you can't feel. And Jesus comes up to the man who approaches him. And the Bible says that he reached out and touched him. Touch in the Greek is actually the word, the word haptama. It means to attach oneself to or to adhere. In other words, I don't believe Jesus just touched him barely like we probably would. Come on, if there was somebody full of leprosy, you'd probably be like. But this scripture refers to the fact that Jesus, he, he either put him in a big old bear hug or maybe he put his arm around his shoulder, but the Bible says he touched him. He helped him. He attached oneself to him. He took hold of the man. Maybe he embraced him. Maybe he put his arms around him. He could have healed him with his words, but Jesus knew that this leper needed love as much, if not more, than he needed healing. Jesus reached out to this man because he knew the power of the touch. And we've got to realize the power of our touch in our family and how necessary that is. 
Jesus reached out to this man and he touched him in such a way. Maybe he couldn't feel it in the natural because that is, a, that is because a touch goes far beyond just the natural realm. Through a touch, you feel love. Through a touch, you feel compassion. Through a touch, you feel grace. Through a touch, you, you feel, you feel the, something beyond the physical but you feel the ramifications of a healing that goes to the very innermost depths of you and that's what Jesus did when he reached out and he touched this man he not only healed him on the outside of leprosy but I believe that Jesus went up to him to heal him far beyond the outside and he went all the way to the inside with that touch I was thinking about that and I was reminded of when we had our, all of our campus pastors here for Collide. And there was one of our pastors that told my husband, he said, there was a moment and you came over and you put your arms around me and you hugged me. He said, in that moment, there was an orphan spirit that just broke right off of my life. That is the power of a touch that is the power when you reach out and love and you touch someone and oh how necessary it is mom and dad and children that in our homes our homes are filled with a touch the right touch come on the touch that says I love you the touch that says I am here for you the touch that says I have grace for you in every moment come on son somebody it's time Lord we need the right touch again in the house you see the right touch in the home can help create bonds and attachments between family members that are not easily broken and I know there's some of you out there and you're saying I'm just not a touchy-feely person pastor Dom but your kids need your touch they need you to walk over to them and put your arms around them and touch them. There is power in a touch. In fact, we see the damage that happens when there is not right touches in the home. There is something called reactive attachment disorder. Some of you may know about that. It's actually a diagnosis in children who have been physically and emotionally neglected that they have not had that nurturing touch in their life and that bond that comes with that touch. And these, these children end up struggling. They struggle in their emotions. They even struggle having difficulty in developing relationships in their life. Many of them walk in fear or anger simply because they did not have that bond that comes through that physical touch of a parent. And one of the most Important ways that families bond is through touches that matter. When it comes to building your family, the touch matters. Tell your neighbor the touch matters. Remember Luke 8 when the woman with the issue of blood came behind Jesus and she touched him. The Bible said she reached out and touched the hem of the garment and she was healed. Woo! Sometimes your healing hinges on you reaching, you being willing to reach out and move out and touch someone else. Your willingness to reach out and touch someone else can actually bring healing to you. Oh, come on, mom and dad. Give God praise for the simple building block of a strong family that is as simple as the right touch. You need to just reach over and touch somebody next to you. Just give them a pat there. There is something about the touch. So the touch that matters and then the talk that matters. Oh, yeah, we're going there. Yeah, speaking in particular to parents, there is a fine line at times between discipline, encouragement, and degrading language. 
Never forget that your words have the power to do good or bad, to help or to heal, to build up or to tear down, to bless or to curse. We quote it all the time, but it's the one scripture we fail to remember. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. You can all say it. Somebody declare that with me. Say, death and life. Is in the power of my tongue. Yes. Never forget your words have power. And one of the things that makes for a healthy home is learn to discipline without degrading. Don't use words like you'll never learn. You'll never amount to anything. You're so stupid. Come on. You're so dumb. You're, you're no good. I can't do anything with you. You're a pain in my, you know. <laughs> but seriously, your words have long lasting power. There's a ministry that I do called Restoring the Foundations. And it is words from childhood that usually, usually from people's parents that have affected the most people that I walk through inner healing and deliverance. These words take root and hold in bondage until we allow the power of Jesus Christ and his work on the cross to break their holds in our lives. You don't, you sit out there today and you're like, well, I don't, I don't know if that's really true. It can really have that kind of hold. But I guarantee you there are some words that you can still remember and you're probably even replaying in your head today that was spoken to you when you were three, four, and five years old. That ought to tell you that your words have power. We've all said things that, that we wished we wouldn't have said. I have been there. We've said things we wish we wouldn't have said. We've said it in a way that we wish we would not have said it to our children. In the heat of moment and stressful situations, we have come across in ways that we wish we could just take back. We wish we could just pull those words back in our mouth and start all over again. But we can't do that. But one thing we can do is we can sit down with our child and we can say, listen, mama didn't mean to say it like that. I shouldn't have said it that way. I should have said it this way. Come on. I've done it. We have to do it. Rather than let those words go forth and have power over their life, uh, we have to sit down when we realize we have messed up and we have to sit down and make sure that little pookie, come on, I know, I, know, I know you're not good for nothing, little pookie, come on. But we have to let them know that we love them. Your words have power. They release life or death. They can bind or loose. They can tear down or they can build up. And one of the most important things you can do as a parent is to bless the next generation with your words. That's what we see happening in this scripture. An amazing practice we see in the Bible is when one generation blesses another. A spoken blessing in the Old Testament carried weight and often carried a great prophetic direction and insight concerning the child, concerning his future, that, that God would honor. And Old Testament blessings especially, they bestowed privilege. They, they, they bestowed prestige. They, they bestowed authority and even wealth. So we see in verse 27, there was something very powerful here. He said, and he came near and kissed him and he smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him and said, surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. He smelled the smell of his clothing and he said, you smell like the outside. Now he wasn't saying you stink because that's what my family tells me when I come in from outside. They say, you stink, you need to go get a shower. <laughs> but he was saying, you smell like the outside, which the Lord has blessed. He was telling him, you smell like my boy. You, you smell like like you're you're such a blessing to me you're you're my boy he might stink to you come on but you know mama he's a blessing he's a blessing to you he might stink to somebody else but he's a blessing to you 
And you can't really speak blessings over your family until you begin to see your family as a blessing. It's very important for you to see the people in your home as your blessing. Little Johnny, come on. We got to see him as a blessing. I know he's tearing it up from one end of the house to another. That he's your blessing. Come on, he's just a carbon copy of you is what he is. That teenager, come on, she's your blessing. Some of you have adult children in your house. Come on, they're still your blessing. That certainly doesn't mean that they won't be challenging sometimes, but you're challenging sometimes. Come on. But we got to see them as our blessing. So let's break this blessing, this spoken blessing down. Verse 28 says, Therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven. The first blessing that Isaac spoke was that Jacob would experience the dew of heaven. In other words, he was saying, you will experience favor from another world. You see, the dew of heaven represents the favor of heaven and the blessings of unmerited favor of God. You need to bless your family and declare heaven's unmerited favor and blessing falls on your whole house. Woo. Why don't you raise your hands? You know, we like to declare things in this place. Raise your hands up and say, I bless my family and I declare heaven's unmerited favor and blessings falls on my whole house. Woo, give God praise for that. that. That's very important because there is no favor that compares to the favor of God. You want your children to walk under, under the favor of God. It, favor opens doors that no man can open. It raises you to levels that you could have never achieved on your own. It releases blessings on your life that you didn't even deserve when you're under God's favor. And it's always unmerited favor. We didn't deserve it. We couldn't earn it. It's unmerited. Hallelujah. Why not praise God right now because you have unmerited favor. Woo! You know you didn't always do the right thing. You know you didn't earn it. But it's just the favor of God as a child of God. Somebody declare, I have favor. Hallelujah. And then he says in verse 28, he says, Therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. So this represents blessings on earth. This represents more than enough of every resource and more than enough of supernatural abundance. Who wants your family to walk in a supernatural abundance? Hallelujah. Somebody say fatness. Fatness here in this context means the fat pieces, the fertile and fattest places, and the olive oil. That's what it refers to. So what I see here is that this is a very powerful blessing that he was releasing because fat represents prosperity, oil, in particular, olive oil, which represents the anointing. Ooh. Now, the anointing, it enables you to walk in a realm of power and ability that you could not walk in before you were anointed. And this father blessed the next generation. In fact, he declared that this son should be anointed for fatness and abundance. So why don't you raise up your hands and let's declare it over our house. Say, I bless my family and I declare they are anointed for fatness, favor, abundance, and prosperity. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, I love that. That's powerful. And finally, the last part of this Father's blessing. He said, let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be those who bless you. 
This is so powerful because this part of this spoken blessing declares empowerment. It declares protection and perpetual victory. In a very real sense, this dad was telling this son, you will walk in victory and not defeat. Come on, dad. We need some dads in the house today to begin declaring over your children. You will walk in victory and not defeat. People who connect to you will be blessed and you will be an overcomer. That's what he was declaring over his son. And I need to tell somebody today because we live in a society where so many people have embraced a victim mindset. When God did not call us to be victims, he called us to be victorious. Hallelujah. He called us to be victors. And the talk that matters in our home, the talk that will build a strong family is a faith talk. Woo! Hallelujah. There's, there is such a victim mindset that has come over our society. And I, I, as I was thinking about this text, I was reminded of David whenever he went to, back to Ziklag. Remember, David was dwelling in Ziklag. They had went away to to fight, and when they came back to Ziklag, the Amalekites had come in and they had destroyed the city. They had burned it by fire. They had taken all their wives, all their sons, and all their daughters into captivity. And the Bible said that when they came back and they saw that, that David and all the men that had been away fighting, they broke down and they wept bitterly. Could you imagine in this moment, they wept, the Bible said, until they could weep no more. They were grieving at a level that you could not even imagine. Everything had been taken that they loved. And here David is in this moment. But the Bible does not say that David David shrunk back in a victim mindset. The Bible does not say that he turned and blamed his right-hand man and said, if you would have, come on. The Bible doesn't say that he just yielded all his resistance and sat down and cried and said, well, if the enemy has taken my family, then I guess that's all that we can do. No, the Bible said at that moment, even the people spake of stoning him because they were so upset. And the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Woo! And I'm talking to some mamas and some daddies in this room right now. And I don't care what the enemy comes against your family with. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it looks like he has stolen. I'm calling you to rise up with a faith talk in your spirit. You see, David, the Bible said he encouraged himself in the Lord in that moment. I don't know what he said. It doesn't tell us. He must have just said, Lord, I remember when you helped me take down the lion and the bear. I remember, Lord, whenever you had me face Goliath and you caused him to fall with just a sling and a stone. I remember, Lord, when you delivered me from Saul when he was trying to kill me. Oh, Lord. And he began to encourage himself. He began to declare. Maybe he was when he was saying, Lord, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know what he was saying to encourage himself, but the Bible says he encouraged encouraged himself in the Lord. In other words, he built his faith up and then he went and he inquired of the Lord. And he said, Lord, uh, can I go get my family back? Will you give me the victory? He was asking the Lord. And the Lord turned to David and he said, pursue, uh, go after them, uh, overtake them uh, and recover all. Hallelujah. God has not called us to be victims to any scheme of the enemy against our families, against our marriage. He has called us to be victorious and overtake and recover all in the name of Jesus. Let me hear from some mighty mamas and some mighty daddies in this room. You're not willing to take anything off the devil when it comes to your son or your daughter, but you're going to rise up and you're going to fight. Woo! Hallelujah. David inquired of the Lord and the Lord said, go get them back. I'm telling somebody right now, go get them back. You've quit praying.
praying. Get back on your knees. Go get them back. You quit loving them. Go get them back. Put your arm around them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're not a victim. You're an overcomer. I don't care what happened to you. I don't care who said what about you. I don't care what the opinions of others are. You are not what anybody says about you. You are who God says you are. And he says you're not a victim, but you are an overcomer. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord praise. In Christ, you've been made more than a conqueror. Woo, hallelujah. Somebody needs to encourage yourself in the Lord today. Hallelujah. So this dad, he blessed his son that he would be perpetually in victory. So raise your hands up and let's bless our families. Say, so I bless my family. And I declare that they can and will lead lives of victory. They are not victims. They are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo, I love you, church. That's so good. So the touch that matters, the talk that matters, but also the truth matters. This is important to me. See, at the end of his life, Isaac blessed his sons for their future. And he trusted the next generation to walk in what he had spoken over them. Now, you look at this whole story, and it, it, it's quite the story. But yet and still, Isaac blessed his son in the midst of it all. And he expected the next generation to walk it out. I don't care what it looks like, mom and dad. You keep speaking the blessing of the Lord over your marriage. You keep speaking the blessing of the Lord over those children in the name of Jesus. Isaac had followed in his father Abraham's footsteps and he had served the Lord. He, has taught, he had taught his children up to the end of his life the ways of the Lord. And we have to teach our children and trust them to then walk in what we have deposited in them. Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up in the Greek means to train. It means to discipline. But it also means dedicate. And as parents, more than ever before, we have to be dedicated. No matter how uncomfortable it makes us, we have to be dedicated to teaching our children in the way they should go. We have to teach them by the way we live, by the way we speak. But more than ever in the times we are living in, we must be dedicated to teaching them the truth of the Word of God. We have to be dedicated to teaching them truth if we are going to see them walk in the truth because their schools are not teaching them the truth. Social media is not teaching them the truth. Google is not teaching them the truth. We have to be dedicated to teaching them the truth. The world is teaching a relative truth message to our children. He is teaching you have your truth and I have mine. That's what the world is teaching them. It's a changing truth according to the circumstance, according to your own opinion. But I'm here to declare the same today as we declared 20 years ago. There is one truth. Psalms 119, 160 says, The entirety of your word is truth and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. Truth is constant. Our opinion does not change this truth. Truth is absolute. It plays no favorites. It applies to everybody the same. If the standard for truth changes from person to person or from generation to generation, then it is no longer truth. And if you're building your life uh, and your family on this changing truth, then you are building your family on shaky ground. What I see right now is that Satan is out to kill absolute truth. He wants to silence real truth so that he can release his agenda. 
And that is to steal and to kill and destroy this generation. And you know, it, it, kind, of, it kind of feels like this assault on truth has just really risen over the last couple of years really, really strongly over the last few years. But honestly, it's been going on since the beginning of time. And in 1 John, I mean, in John 18, 33, there is a situation where Jesus has come before Pilate. And Pilate was asking him about, is he the king of the Jews? You know that story. And the Bible says that Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? And Jesus answered, you say rightly. That I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews, and he said to them, I find no fault in him at all. But you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you therefore want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Then they all cried again and said, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Pilate, all the way back then, said, What is truth? He himself found no fault in Jesus. He knew that Jesus was innocent. He knew that he was the one that it should have been released. But yet, when the crowd shouted, Give us Barabbas, who was a known thief and a known murderer. He destroyed everything around him. He, was, he stole, he was the one that came to steal and kill and destroy. But he went with the crowd when the crowd said, Give us Barabbas. Barabbas. It was obvious that Jesus had done nothing wrong, that he should have been the one to be set free and to be released. And I'm here to tell you, if you don't have a foundation of truth, and if we don't lay a foundation of truth for our kids, they will go with what the majority says. Pilate was questioning, what is truth? He really was not standing on a strong foundation of what is truth. And so when the crowd said, give us Barabbas, then he released Barabbas. And young people, if you don't have a foundation of truth, you'll believe what is taught in the classroom. I'm here to warn you, especially those going off to college and university. If you don't have a foundation of truth and you know what the Word of God says and you know that it is truth, you will go with what makes you the most comfortable. You will go with what feeds your feelings in the moment because that is the agenda of the enemy. What is truth? That's what the enemy is, is trying to get our young people to believe. What is truth? Your truth is not my truth. That's what they're saying. This generation is saying, it's, it's my truth. Live, live your truth. Because if you live your truth, it doesn't require you to change. But if you live his truth, it requires you to change. And it's only by his change that there is real freedom. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The enemy is deceiving a generation to believe. If I live my own truth, if I live by just what I believe, I'm free. But there is no freedom in that. There is only freedom in the name that is above every name. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We must build our family on the foundation of Jesus Christ who is truth. We don't adopt the values of the world around us, but we build our homes and our families on the never-changing, forever-lasting truth. And we must teach and train up our children on truth. It's kind of foreign today to say right is right and wrong is wrong. It's still right to honor your parents. 
It's still wrong to disrespect your teachers. We've got to teach truth to our children. It's still important to tell the truth, the absolute truth, and not your own version of the truth. Huh. We must instill in our children to do the right thing, even when no one else is looking. You see, Hebrews eleven twenty says, By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. We're not just building a temporary home, but our children have an eternal future. We're not just building a natural house, but we must build our family on the Word of God, the rock-solid foundation that will keep them in stormy times and in troubled times. If their lives are grounded and rooted in the Word of truth, I don't care what the devil may bring at them, they will stand firm. Hallelujah. But we have to be dedicated to teaching truth. Whew. Come on, the Ten Commandments are still the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not steal, but yet there's a mentality that says don't steal, but if you can take it, take it, because you know life's not fair. Come on, am I telling the truth? The enemy is trying to distort truth. He's trying to pose a question to this generation. What is truth? You shall have no other gods before me. You should not make for yourself any graven image in the form of anything. We must let our children know Jesus is the only way. And he's the only one we worship. There's no mixture with crystals or horoscopes or Buddha or Muhammad. We don't worship good luck and we don't worship money or celebrities or sports or fame or cars or houses. There's only one God and one way to heaven. Come on, we've got to get truth taught back in the house. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not sleep with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Thou shalt not have an affair with that married man. Oh, we don't need to be so absolute, Pastor Dawn. Oh, yes, we do. I'm calling some mamas and daddies to rise up and begin speaking truth. You see, the spirit of this age is a spirit of compromise. And the culture, we cannot allow the culture to change the Christian home and definitely not change the church. In this house, we are going to speak the truth. And we've got to be dedicated to teaching and speaking truth. In the home, we must teach our children. Marriage is between man and woman. We teach our children, racism is wrong. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made. Be kind to everybody. Come on the Jesus way. Let's do it the Jesus way. Here's another truth. Your character still matters. Woo, really? Yeah, really. God's word does not change. If you're going to build a strong family, you're going to build it on being a person of your word. We've got to teach our children character. If we're going to prepare our children for the future, we've got to be dedicated to teaching them that if you're going to do something, you follow through on your word. You're consistent with what you say. You remember what you have said. You honor it and you follow it through. Oh, what about that? We build our families by being a mom and dad of our word. That we follow through with what we say. Because not being a person of your word will sabotage your marriage. It'll sabotage your relationship with your children, your job. It'll damage your character. And again, Isaac blessed his sons in regard to their future. I want the musicians to join me here. I need to close. Isaac blessed his sons. And it wasn't that his family did everything right. And that they had all their stuff together. Just read the story when you go home. Mama was deceptive. She brought Jacob right into stealing the father's blessing. Esau was driven by his flesh. He traded his birthright for a bowl of soup. Come on, y'all. There was a lot in this family that didn't measure up. But before we get too judgy, we might ought to look at our own family and thank God that he still comes through Woo. when we mess up. I feel like somebody's getting a little bit liberated right now. 
getting set a little bit free from some condemnation that the enemy's been putting on you about your family and about your children because you've made some mistakes. But I'm here to remind you, whew, glory to God. God is still faithful and he still comes through when we mess up and turn to him. Maybe you ought to just take about 30 seconds right here and give God praise and give him thanks that he can still turn your mess into a miracle. Just because you didn't do everything right, you ought to go ahead and praise him right now that he's got your children in the palm of his hands. Hallelujah. Somebody just declare they're coming in. Hallelujah. Oh, you know, you can't praise him if, if you've been just doing everything right. But if you've messed up once or twice and you've still seen the Lord come through and be faithful, you ought to just thank him and praise him today. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. With all that happened in their family, if you read the story, Jacob became a good man out of all that. A man who wrestled with the angel and God changed his walk, gave him a new name, a new life, gave him a new future, God's future. God worked it all out. Esau came back and forgave his brother and their relationship was restored. He didn't kill him in the end. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. He can still turn your story around. I feel like I'm just encouraging somebody today about your family. Be encouraged. He is still a turnaround way making God. That when we don't do everything just perfect, our God is more than enough to step in. Ooh. Do I have any sons or daughters in the house? And you know you walked away, but it was because of a praying mama or a blessing daddy that you're here right now, that somehow God got you by the neck and just turned you around. Hallelujah. And God can do it again. Hallelujah. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he was old, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I want you to stand all over this place. As we close, I want to release a blessing over families. If you have your family with you and you want to come stand down front right now, why don't you do that? Just bring your family down. We're going to declare a blessing. God's building strong families, strong marriages here at Calvary. In Jesus' name, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Every lying tongue he will condemn. Your families are blessed. Your marriage is blessed. You're increasing in favor and wisdom, discernment. He's given you love for one another and for your family. His blessing is over you in Jesus' name. Woo. He's restoring homes in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. Why don't you slip up your hands all over this room and just receive it. I declare every family and every home is blessed with the peace and presence of God. May every member walk in relationship with Jesus Christ as we declare, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I command every generational curse is destroyed. I release physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual blessing over our families. I apply the blood of Jesus over our families and households claiming that sickness, death, and destruction must pass over because of the blood. 
May our families be continually built up in love with Jesus Christ as the foundation. Amen. Amen. Do you receive it? Give God praise for his word. Give God praise for his spoken blessing. Hallelujah. We're building strong families, building strong marriages in this house. And hear me, when you go out of this place today, I want you to remember, the touch matters. The talk matters. And in sending our children out in this day, the truth matters. Hallelujah. Well, give God praise for his word this morning. Hallelujah. We're blessed, Calvary. We're blessed in this house. Amen. Amen. Just slip your hands up. And I want to pray for you today before we close. Father, we just thank you for your word. Thank you for our families. Thank you for every marriage. Thank you for the homes represented in this place today. And I just decree and declare the blessing of the Lord over them this week, that your peace will rule and reign over them. There is not one thing that the enemy can bring against them that can prosper because you've provided the blood for every situation. And we thank you, Lord, and we give your name all the glory. Bless every family this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Be blessed, Calvary. We love you and we'll see you. Hey, I'll see the watchmen Tuesday at noon right here in the sanctuary.